Uh, a monster of a human being, but a great moment in television history. Huh. Oh, I can hear me. What's up? Can you actually see yourself? I don't show us as being live at all. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see us. We're live. Uh. Um, you could have Twitch on your laptop and check it out. Uh, I can hear us both, though. Yeah, maybe I need to do that. Okay, cool. I'm just going to yep. bring this over to Vault. Hey, Peppers. everybody. So what's going on right now is that Taylor and I have switched roles. <laughs> we like to really uh, shift things up. <laughs> No, I have uh, I have spent a little bit of time um, managing some new Twitch options that I'm excited Doesn't about. Doesn't it look beautiful? Doesn't it look wonderful, better than when I do it? Because I'm a <laughs> lunatic and don't know how to do it. And refuse to learn. <laughs> <laughs> so my willful obstinance has gained me the <laughs> loss of this. Which it's, is like, it's like the uh, Calvin and Hobbes cartoon it's like if you do thing if you do it badly enough once they'll never ask you to, do it, again. to do it again i've lived my whole life by that <laughs> um you, you'll all probably notice it's not wednesday uh it is uh, not uh that's because me and taylor are sneaking another one on because we need to we actually weren't going to do this on stream but because we're trying to work out the kinks as it were um, with the shifting of the Twitch, the changing of the Twitch. Yeah. Um, we are doing that. Now, I, uh, I have talked at great length about how much Corey does for this project. Um, and at a certain point, your guilt kind of has to override your laziness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm taking on streaming stuff here. I'm stoked. Um, I'm actually very excited. Uh, so like couple like right now, we're just trying to get everything. We're trying to streamline all our feats to get them back into pocket of how the game currently looks, which is a lot. Uh, we need to rewrite the attributes as approaches. I think like a quick couple sentences on each of those will be good for us uh, to go through. Uh, we need to actually put some flags down on cost of things in our caravan creation. Uh, we need to create the disposition word bank that is going to apply not only to uh, car caravan creation, but NPC stat blocks in general. So that'll be good. Um, and uh, I've made a couple quirks. We need to make uh, some more jobs, more quirks. And I think we'll be pretty good at that point. Um, we are likely going to be running uh, one, one play test on stream this week, and then I, I think I'm going to be running one or two at home. So, yeah, we are <laughs> we're, we're we're getting into it. Um, Hell yeah! Um, okay, so the question is, where do you want to start? Uh, hmm, you know what? Let's start with attributes. Let's let's define our attributes as um, as approaches. Okay. Yeah, love it. Should we uh, change the name from attribute to approach? I don't know. No, uh, is that two, two L five R? Yeah, is that two L five R? I I'm not honestly sure. I'm not either. Do they call them approaches? Uh, no, yeah. they call them rings. Well, they they call them rings, but I mean, they they identify your rings as approaches for skills. <laughs> I like the idea of like a really redneck guy in in the L in Rokugan being like, oh yeah, they call them rings. <laughs> Sure thing. <laughs> sure so thing. You went, that is my Earth ring. Oh, you you went you went main redneck. Yeah, yeah. That's I was the I'm most familiar. Well, yeah. With. I mean, that's that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I was going I was going straight down south. It's like, oh yeah, dang old fire ring, man. <laughs> I would love to see you. Whoa, 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 whoa! Reskinning L five R with different kinds of rednecks as the difference. <laughs> Tell you what, man, dang old man insults my honor, man. 
Have you ever seen the fan theory that Boomhauer is a Texas Ranger who's like watching uh, elements of the? It's it's not a fan theory. It's oh, that's, so that's actually true, right? No, in in like the last episode of King of the Hill, it's it's really brief because I think that they planned on like going into it more before the series ended. But like somebody goes to Boomhauer's house to get him for something. I and remember like, that. Yeah. yeah. And they leave together. And like when he leaves, like the camera focuses in on like his bureau that has like his Texas Ranger badge. Um, so he's, like he's like watching Dale, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because Dale's yeah. doing all this <laughs> fucked up stuff. The, the thing is, though, if they were watching Dale and this has always bothered me. Like, Boomhauer has Dale already on, like, multiple counts of, like, life sentence charges. Like, in the episode, oh. where, in the episode where, like, they find out that Bill uh, was, like, an experimental test subject for the military, like, Dale literally sneaks into a military base and steals classified information. Like, that's auto life sentence. Like, he's out. And, I like, think it's because the fan theory I've seen is that he's not actually watching Dale. He's actually actually watching Hank because of all of the huh. numerous fraud charges that Hank would be racking up by working for uh, oh, the Buck Strickland. Yeah. Buck Strickland, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point actually. Yeah. Maybe maybe Dale's not the maybe Dale Dale's not was, the target. Well, that's the thing like Dale like at his core is kind of like he's dangerous but only accidentally like he, right. he's like more harmless than anything he's an idiot he, he's, yeah he purports a lot of bullshit but like right. Dale's not actually gonna bomb something <laughs> like, not on purpose <laughs> anyway oh shit okay cool um right. so uh, welcome to our <laughs> yeah, welcome, welcome to our king of the hill fan cast um <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I just uh, want to double check. Uh, Taylor's done a lot of good work on this already. Yes. Yeah, man, that looks great. What are we? What are we looking at? What looks great? Just the, just the, just the whole setup that you have there for the for the stream or for the. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. I thought you were talking about the doc for like the attributes. I'm like, dude, you've seen this a billion times. Uh, which one are we in right now? One E? Uh, right now we're editing in one E. And then once we make decisions on that, I'll start importing that to alpha quick start. But uh, uh -huh. this section in particular with uh, holistics and tribalism and all this stuff, this is what we're really going yeah. after. Um, so first things first, uh, we got rid of tribalism and network. So these guys right out. These guys can go. Slash and burn, baby. Oh yeah, let's actually let's let's cut down on uh um today. Let's let's pull some uh provinces out. Oh, you wanna do that today too? Yeah, yeah, fuck it. Okay, cool. Um Alright, so let's do this first. So um Holistics covers the intuitive knowledge and interconnectivity of things. The best way to travel from point A to point B, given the conditions of the road and the movement of the herds. So if I'm approaching something uh, using a holistic approach, what does that look like? Like, let's let's use the example of like the locked door. That's like my favorite go to like explanation right. mechanic. If I'm approaching a locked door holistically, what does that mean? So I think approaching a locked door holistically is like listening to the uh, to the things that are connected to the door, like for the for the uh, guards walking outside uh, for like uh, to to approach that carefully by by monitoring systems outside of the door itself. Right. It, it is um, how those things lead into going through the door. Um, so okay. I'd be listening for, um, yeah, uh, okay. like the guards walking outside, the creak of the floorboard beneath it, like that kind of shit. So, well, so that's that's not uh, approaching the locked door itself. That's trying to discern what dangers there are around the door. If I'm using it to try and get through the door, what what would it be like? Because uh, my my thought here would be. Instead of trying to pick the lock yourself, a holistic approach would be trying to find someone who can like 
instead of trying to pick the lock or whatever, maybe I keep an eye out for a guard that has the key. So, so here's the thing, though. Like, we're both we're we're both doing something where it's we're not actually picking the lock, right? Uh, we're both well, monitoring a system outside. Well, no, because like, well, if, we're, if, but, we're, if we're, sorry, go go ahead. Well, if we're if we're, if we're talking, because the issue with mine is that we're not directly picking the lock. We're we're talking about the outside systems that control it. But looking like looking for a guard who has a key that's perception outside of it too i think we're both talking about the same thing well no but the difference is when your role is completed and your role is done that door is still even if you get a full success even if you understand everything about that door you have not succeeded in completing the task of opening that locked door with mine if i find that guard that has the key i can then you get the key yeah, but you still haven't. But that's the thing. That's you still haven't completed the task. You found the key, right? You don't have the key. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't have it. Um, I would need to roll again to get it. OK, so then neither of those approaches work. No, but I think we're circling the same thing, though. Um, and so so that's what we need to lock down on. It is um, uh, so. It is the. uh, uh the path through through auxiliary systems, but I don't know how to word that as getting through a door. Let's start with something a bit easier and work our way back then. Sure. Let's not get stuck. Sure, yeah. sure. Uh, uh, so cl- let's start with something we know. Clockwork, right? Okay, picking the lock for sure, yeah. right? Clockwork is the mechanical nature of a lock and getting through it. Okay, so approaching tasks through an understanding of the mechanical edifice related to your task. Yeah. I.e. picking the lock on a door. Um, by that same note, uh, ferocity, also super easy. You're lowering your shoulder into that bad boy and you are knocking yeah. that thing down. Brute force. It, yeah. it, it is. It is coming through with the strength of yourself. Um, uh, I think another one that's easy once you have that written. Let me know. Yeah, one sec. Uh, using uh, strength of your body or resources, i.e. Ooh, maybe adaptation and logic need to. Mm. Lowering your shoulder into the door to knock it down. Okay, what were you going to say? Uh, so nebulae, uh, like feeling the webways through the world and unlocking it through the connections, like through the magical connection of things, right? Okay. So just like magicking the door open, basically? Yeah, yeah, it, 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 okay. it is. Yeah. It's manipulating the magic ever present in the world to make something happen. I casting a spell to unlock the door or open the door. Yep. And like we have to define these outside of the door example, right? We do. I'm just I'm trying yeah. to use this right now just to give us kind of a general, sure. yeah, a, a, a starting Adap- point. Adaptation would be taking the hinges off. I like that a lot. <laughs> I was gonna say look for a window, uh, but I like taking I think, the hinges off yeah. a lot more. I think logic would be knowing the weak points on that lock from past, uh, like from research and being able to like utilize those against itself. Right. It it is the knowledge of uh, something. So, so to push back on that though, uh, that's clockwork, right? Picking the lock on a door. I can't do that if I don't know the weaknesses of the lock. Okay. Uh, I mean, I guess from the same perspective, it, it could be knowing the weakness of the material of the door. It, it, it is the knowledge of the um, 
So I think clockwork is understanding mechanical natures of things as they exist. Logic is the like, um, it, it doesn't have to be mechanical in nature, right? It, it is the, um, I'm yep. smarting my way out of it. Um, may, maybe logic is, uh, oh, holistics is talking somebody to open the door for you, right? Oh, yeah, that's exactly yeah. it. That's what we were circling around. Yeah. Um, convincing someone to open the door for you. Obfuscation would be stealing the key from someone else in order to get the door open, right? I think that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Obfuscation is the crime attribute. Yeah. <laughs> this is a crime. This is crime. <laughs> <laughs> Roll for crime, please. Uh, okay. Stealing the key from someone to open the door. Logic might be knowing that there's a back door. <laughs> I think that might be it. Um, yeah. So I... I guess logic would be, like, knowing that there, there is an unlocked entrance somewhere else, right? Okay. Like... Yeah. Knowing there are multiple... Uh, what did you... Points what of was entry. The points of entry? Did you say egress in Cyberpunk yeah. on Thursday? I just really liked that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Multiple points of egress and Good checking work. for a window okay that was pretty easy yeah no that actually now, worked now let's distill them down yeah okay um, so going back up here so holistics then is it's a social this is the social attribute right it, it is uh yeah it, 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 it's working bonds to make things get done Working bonds with known or unknown persons to... In order to accomplish a task. Yeah, to accomplish a task. Okay, cool. Uh, obfuscate. <laughs> Crime! Crime. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's write it right. Let's write yeah. it right. <laughs> <sighs> uh, uh, um... To do things duplicitously, to 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 sneak, to finagle, to um, to 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 accomplish when one doesn't want you to, to to break in, like that uh, kind of stuff. Right? Subterfuge, sabotage, or stealth. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that works. I like alliterations. Dude, love it. Look at our stream <laughs> title today. Right. Prepping for Perdition is such a tight, like, so to, to give everybody an idea. Oh, wait, what the hell? What? Um, our episode is Playtest Prep Squad. Oh, did you not change the title? I thought I, oh, I have to click the done button. Sorry, yeah. guys, I'm an idiot. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is why we, this is why we do this. One sec. I don't know, we'll update in the middle of a... I should I try? Try. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Go call. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Uh, I have one little extra addition. There we go. <laughs> I hate. I hate. I hate that you're in charge of the Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> You've made me a monster. <laughs> Uh, okay uh cool so 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 i think like where things are going to get most hairy is the difference between logic and adaptation um yeah because I agree. they feel very similar um and, and maybe it is the case that we remove one of them later um but for now um logic is an approach of research um and adaptation is an approach of experience right like uh i like that differentiation yeah. Uh, okay. So using research and knowledge to accomplish a task, um, or well, to accomplish the goal of a task, even if that means not accomplishing the method of the task. Does that make sense? Or am I... I think that's adaptation, right? I think logic is is using um, like 
like it, adaptations like if i'm using a uh a, a clever resource like taking the hinges off a door instead of breaking the door lock logic is the research and study see, of the, see yeah they're they're weird um, i i actually think we have them backwards I could totally see logic as being taking the hinges off a door and adaptation being just looking for a window. Yeah, they both kind of fit is the thing. Well, like, uh, hear me out. I actually think taking the hinges off a door fits logic better. That is like understanding, like, what is a door made of? How does a door work? Um, And like finding the simplest solution for it. Whereas adaptation is like, okay, I've accepted that I'm not getting through this door. Let's find something else. That's adapting to a changing okay. environment. I, I can agree with that. Um, okay. I, I will say that, like, the definition that you first picked for logic, the, like, not the definition, the, the one you just said is, um, that's adaptation, though, right? Like, if we're... Uh... Nah, well, well, let's just let's just go on. Let's just go on. Um, it, it, we're, we're, I'm splitting hairs, and we don't need to. Um... Yeah, I, I agree. I can agree with that for sure. Okay, I'm just gonna gussy this up. Okay, cool. Uh, Adaptation is finding auxiliary means to circumvent the method. Um. Wait, which one is? Adaptation is using auxiliary means to circumvent a method like finding a different door or finding uh, a window in our case. And logic is knowing the, uh, like utilizing knowledge of, utilizing knowledge in order to get, uh, in order to um, bypass a challenge, I guess. Uh, Yes, so. We should yeah. definitely keep our eye on those two, though. I, I agree. The more we talk about them, the more those sound really similar. Which um, would make life easier on the end of having just six. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Um, Sorry, can you repeat Logica again? You were going real quick. Oh, uh, it, it is uh, using knowledge to uh, bypass uh, in order to accomplish uh knowledge of systems in order to accomplish uh, a task, right? It's like, I don't I, I don't know how to open this door, but I know that it has hinges, and if those come off, then right. I, I'm through. Okay, tight. Uh, uh, got adaptation. Okay, and so Nebulae, which we did, manipulating the ever-present magic in the world to make something happen. Yeah. That makes sense to me. And then ferocity, forcing your way through a situation using the strength of your body or resources. Yeah. Okay, cool. Task cool. one, task one complete, dog. Hell yeah, baby. It's an electric guitar breakdown. It was. You. It was good. It was, I'm proud of you. Thank uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, what's next? Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go. Th- I mean, I don't, I don't think we need to do a skills definition yet, but I think next week we need to have skills defined with sentences, unless you feel like doing that right now, but I feel like it's going to take a little time. That's going to turn into a slog real, real quick. Um, yeah. do we need that by Wednesday? Just out of curiosity. I think we can wait till the week, the following week. Cause we okay. both know them and we're not doing any, like, uh, we're not doing like an, uh, a blind uh, yeah. test, so we can explain it if need be. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's uh, uh, let's let's cut slash and burn. All right. Provinces. Yeah. Provinces. Who can we combine? So, as much as it pains me to say this, I think the pharaoh needs to go. Really? I do. Like I. Has the reckoner? There's nothing that the pharaoh does that isn't. There's nothing that the Pharaoh does that isn't achieved by some other province. And all of the feats that we have for uh, the Pharaoh could easily go under somebody else. Okay. Like, I, um, I, I hate it because I'm in love with the 
the idea of the Pharaoh. I love, yeah. I love the in lore, like justification for the name, but mm -hmm. yeah, man, I I've been struggling with this honestly for the last couple of weeks and I haven't wanted to say anything because yeah, I, I mean, really, I hate it. Uh, yeah. I really like the idea of the Pharaoh. I would love for you to give me a reason why we should keep him. Uh, I mean, I, I, I love him and I think it gives a lot of flavor to, um, our provinces. Okay. Uh, having a leadership role, I think, is super big, but I also see where you're coming from. A leadership role is nebulous, right? Um, yeah, in inherently. I mean, yeah. the other thing is that I'd be more open to keeping the Pharaoh. I think that the feats are what's killing me, because, like, sure. Gravitas is probably the only one that really kind of fits the Pharaoh, but the truth is the mother would probably achieve this same goal um as for like master tactician that could easily go under like a reckoner or a um shepherd we were here first is like a social thing that could easily be done through like a dealer um, i wonder if we change what if we change the name of reckoner to pharaoh Oh, so, you know what? Let's do this. First things first. Let's look at uh, our provinces and see see which ones, sure. like, are, yeah. Like, because he, here's my thing. I think that Shepherd and Mother and Croker all have, like, this weird territorial bond. I think Croker's a bit more on and out, uh, and we can play with that. But I think that Shepherd and Mother have a lot of uh, DNA. Yeah, I think that Spoiler and Dealer have a lot of DNA. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, it is also the case, Taylor, that anything we remove, we can bring back for full release with, like, more, like, a more developed idea. This that's is also just removed, true. Yeah, like, this isn't dead forever. Okay. Um, and I think that Pharaoh would be a cool class to have, like, on a Kickstarter, like, hey, stretch goal, let's we're, we're bring in fucking a couple new cl a couple new provinces. Yeah, like, I don't know. That would be cool. Um, OK, cool. So uh, you've mentioned the overlap with Croker a lot. I, I'm actually I, f I think I feel the same way about Croker that you feel about Pharaoh. It kind of surprises me because I think that Croker has one of the few really well-defined uh areas of responsibility in the caravan. Can you tell me why you think the croaker deserves to get absorbed? I, well, I, I'm saying, I'm saying that they share DNA. I'm not saying that any one of them, uh, isn't inherently the one that should say, I yeah. just think that like keeping up after the party is something that like is inherent in the mother as well. And like, it is defined differently in the croaker, but it is like the same concept. And if we're doing approaches again, that's, that's all I'm saying. There, there okay. is some shared DNA there. Um, and, and I think like it would really behoove us to have this down by three classes. Um, you want to take this down to six. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I would hate to lose my spoiler, but I'm also willing to bring a spoiler back for full release. I would hate to like, I, I, I think Shepherd and Mother can be combined somehow. I, I agree with that. I've, I've thought yeah. that for a little while, honestly. Shepherd and Mother seem to be very, very similar. Um, them both, um, I, wor I worry that like, I don't know, the idea of like, mother could be like I don't know more heteronormative kind of like you know it might offend some I don't know um, but I guess they're all kind of offensive right <laughs> like, that's the they point. are well well they are <laughs> they universe. are they are designed to be offensive in fiction but actually yeah. that we should be careful that we're not offending yeah. people out of fiction I I agree yeah. with that um OK, well, uh, the other thing I also would point out is that, like, the mother manages uh, people in the caravan. Right. That's that's like they're the quartermaster. They they squash disputes and they they like make the caravan function. Right. Yeah. Which is also what the shepherd kind of does. Right? It's also like, what the it. pharaoh is supposed to do. That's like, yeah, that's his like specific job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, to manage everything in there. I actually would be down for making the mother 
into the Pharaoh. And then and then you've got a real reason to have the Pharaoh. You can keep the in lore justification for the Pharaoh. Uh, and then uh, we also get rid of this, you know, potentially potentially offensive uh, name for the mother. Yeah, I, I guess my issue there is do we remove Shepard too? Because like they. <sighs> Well, no, because Shepard, maybe we change the, uh, I don't know, because like. Here's here's mm -hmm. how here's how I would uh, justify the differences between the two of them. Yeah. The Pharaoh is in charge of everything on base when you're in the caravan, like when you're on the caravan site, the Pharaoh is the go to person. They handle all of the logistics. They uh, squash disputes, whatever. When you're actually on a delve, when you're doing a contract on the, the side of a job, the flock. right? The shepherd is in charge, even over the pharaoh. Which I think I like that a lot because it gives a really cool. I think it can provide some really cool narrative dynamics, right? When you're talking about like we're on a job now, like the pharaoh can't like talk shit to me anymore. Um, like I, I. I think that that provides for an interesting dynamic in the caravan. I also think that like a, a shepherd is more about uh, it is more about security and the outward method, like the outward methodology, making sure that like the machines are running kind of thing. Whereas the Pharaoh is more interpersonal, right? Yeah. Yeah. I could also yeah. see that being the case as well. Okay, cool. Then let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's, uh, put the name Pharaoh onto Mother and let's get rid of those Pharaoh feats because we don't love them. Yeah. Well, and just to be clear, actually, are there, let me pull these back up. Uh, are there any feats for the Pharaoh? I, I don't love Master Tactician. Um, no, I don't either. I, I think we can get rid of them. All of them, though? I, I don't uh, hate, yeah. I, I don't hate Gravitas. You're an experienced leader that commands and not demands the respect of those on the being seen carrying me. Uh, when commanding a subordinate, you can uh, yeah, I think that that works, especially with how we just defined it. Yeah. Um, and okay. uh, we were here first. You've been charged with all peddler groups and your inherent report with other peddlers. So negotiating with rival peddlers inside of a job, you may roll part. I mean, it seems so situational. I would more throw it under like uh, an approach feat for. Uh, let's look at the difference for like holistics or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, then I'm just going to put a comment on this if that's the case. Yeah. Uh, well, and, well, actually our feats are only under species. Um, yeah, we are, we don't have approach feats. We have oh, that's right. That. Yeah. yeah. Um, so not going to open maybe... that can of worms. Yeah, maybe maybe that goes under dealer or something like that. That could totally work for dealer. OK, let me just I'm going to shoot this up here real quick. Yeah. Uh, dealer. It feels weird not having Elstrigan here. It does, right? Um, OK, so we were here first. Uh, yeah, um, that can go. Okay. And then we're moving Gravitas under Mother and renaming Mother into Pharaoh, right? Yeah, I, I like that. I, I think it, like, Pharaoh has a cool name to it that I, I like. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. Um, did I spell um, that correctly? No, I didn't. There we go. Pa Paero. Paero. Welcome to Panera. <laughs> 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 hey, this caravan's really weird. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, That's one of my. I'm writing that as a uh, caravan uh, <laughs> resource you can get. Panera, cool. tight. Our job. We have a Panera on ours. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, okay, so I. Okay, I am like. I think that the name Spoiler is stronger than the name Dealer. Okay. I don't I don't um, disagree with that. Yeah. Uh so I do think this is kind of how I felt about the Croker. I do feel like the the responsibilities between Spoiler and Dealer are really different. Um 
so I'm, I'm curious to hear your argument for why one of these needs to be absorbed into the other. Um, well, I think like it, 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 it is the idea of research, like a, a, a dealer is is doing that research on the job by like talking to people. A spoiler is doing that research back alley to understand what we're getting into. But we're both understanding what we're getting into is yeah. the idea. Uh, and I guess that's that's the DNA I see shared. Um, and maybe it's the case that we can keep them both. I don't know. Um, I would like to get another one, at least one more down. Um, uh, eight is a lot. Is that eight? Oh, yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, like, thematically, I can see a spoiler, like... Who else does research in the group? I guess it's just the spoiler who's the researcher. I guess you could make the weaver a researcher. Yeah, uh, they kind of are. Um, I feel like that's going a little bit too D and D lore with it, like the the yeah. smart the the bookworm wizard. Uh, yes, like everyone kind of does research in their own methodology. Is is kind of it? But like. Uh, I don't know. Like, a, what are a the dealer... what are the spoiler what are the spoiler feats that might that might help us a little bit? They're kind of rad because I I think I wrote them all. I think you did. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the spoiler feats are a lot about money uh, and stabbing motherfuckers in the back. Well, that's dealer and rope walker. Yeah. Um. Yeah, are there any are there any spoiler feats that literally talk about research? Uh wasteful creatures either you spend time and research tracking down the feathers and then you spend it your way. Um so like I, I think like a lot of them are trying to uh, mechanize the idea of research in, in like the golden web is about like it, it is you know how th like how people work and you're you're capitalizing on that um okay but yeah i mean they're not like particularly I feel like like okay golden web like that's a dealer feat to me offense the finger the golden eye i think you could make the same argument for i like the name spoiler better yeah uh Unwatched back, keep to the corners. Here's the thing, too. Like, you could throw that definition for spoiler under dealer and have that be a two. Like, you are the person who does the research and knows the contract, right? Like, I like it, that. It, yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I like the idea of just like removing the name dealer and putting all these spoiler feats underneath it. Okay. So, we're moving all of the spoiler feats up to dealer. And yeah. then we're changing dealer into spoiler. Yeah. Okay, one sec. Let me get that done. Fucking, this has the most feats of any... Hell yeah! <laughs> He's got tons. Yeah. Um, okay. So that is going. Bye-bye, spoiler. And then hello, spoiler. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we're changing the dealer's name to spoiler. Oh, right. So now we have Croker, Spoiler, Rope Walker, Shepherd, Pharaoh, Weaver, Reckoner. I like that a lot more. Like, that feels uh, it, a it's lot more, tighter. It's more defined. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll need to redo some of these descriptions for sure. Um, yeah, I, I think we need to look at all of our feats in general and make sure that they adhere to the um, tenets of the game. Because yeah. there are certain feats that are like X amount of yada yada. Um, yeah. Tell you what, let's... Let's go down these real quick, then. We'll we'll do this yeah. as fast as we can. Um, Let's start at the Palu Tar. Let's start at the top, baby. Oh, all the way at the top. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Okay. All right. Smog for X action points. We are still using action points in combat, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Palu Tar creates thick smog. So that's fine with me. Any objection there? I think X needs to be replaced with a number. And, and I What's think, the like, normal amount of action points you get? I think turn? it's three. Uh, you get six. I think we were doing three as activating a regular feat. So, okay. so we're just yeah. going to go with three for now. Yeah, I think um, it could just be a, a polytar creates thick smog covering all. Uh, but yeah. Um, 
Consumption, Polycar can double the effect of a resource and then their resource is gone forever. Well, now resources are like, they don't disappear, right? You roll them at the start at every downtime. So, yeah, that doesn't really work. No. Um, so yeah, that one's just gonna be gone, I think. Yeah, there's uh, no saving that. Yeah, on a successful speech roll, whatever that roll may be, you find something inside yourself that is valuable. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, basically meaning out of this plastic that forms your body pops like a gun. Oh. Like when you need it, it's just like, oh, I didn't know I had that in there. Hmm. Hmm. I think it, the speech roll is like you burp up a gun. Yeah, that's... I mean, I, I like that, but it, it does, like, we, we're getting into the idea of, like, we actually have to define equipment and stuff, like... Well, we were gonna have to do that anyways. Well, yeah, no, I mean, but, like, how does this, like... Like, this seems like a ever-ending supply. Like, how do we how do we mechanize that in a concrete way, is what I'm saying. Uh, maybe once per contract? Uh, but like, but but how do we define like a something inside yourself that is bad? Uh, do, do, do does the archivist pick a random oh, piece of equipment? Yeah, our archivist archivist fiat for sure. Yeah, uh, archivist picks a random piece of equipment. I mean, like if we have a random equipment feat and gives it to you, that makes sense to me. Um, okay. Yeah, I th and I think like once per contract or once per session is probably a good. Uh, Okay. If it's once per contract, I don't even think you need a successful roll, right? It's it's like you can just do this once per contract. Okay, yeah, cool. Then I'm just gonna yeah do that. Okay, cool. We're good here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, Ember fights for X action points. That's now three. Uh, Polyatar can reach across two hexes instead of one until the start of its next turn. Sounds good. Okay, uh, while in direct sunlight, get an additional two action points or regenerate health at a faster pace than others. Okay, so we talked about regenerating health and how we're not doing it. Yeah, so, so I think just get two action points. I think that tracks. Uh, okay, on character creation, select this feat, sacrifice X amount of movement for X amount of armor. Is this supposed to be variable? Because that's cool. I, I think that it is, right? That was yeah. the whole idea. Yeah, that, okay. that, that's, that tracks. Cool. Uh, all right. Vast knowledge. Tap into your hive mind memories once per session. Uh, and you gave something useful. Yeah, archivists will give you something useful. Uh, Sacrifice your action points to be able to move through a solid barrier type. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I I think that tracks. It's just tunneling. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, and then in total darkness, party members. Yeah, I think that works too, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. yep we. Yep, yep. So we don't have uh, anything made for like dim light or what that means, right? No, we don't. Uh, we should definitely have a. So I mean something like uh, especially because yeah. a lot of this takes place like um, uh, like a lot of things can happen underground and in forgotten places like the idea of lighting is going to be important. Like, yeah, no, I completely agree. Especially because we're talking about like that that conversation we have with that guy about like VTTs and things like that. Like I I, I like utilizing light in games. I, I I think that that's yeah. Uh, builders. Okay, standalone, performing actions without your party present. Take a plus one modifier. Love it. Is that just universal? That yeah, seems... I mean, you're by, your, it's, you're by yourself is the thing. So here's the thing. A plus one modifier on our system isn't inherently huge, especially given that you can roll, like, with caravan resources. And we're yeah. talking about a game where, like, intentionally splitting up is supposed to be very dangerous. So, like... I, I think that it kind of self balances in that way. All right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not against that then. Yeah. Uh, plus one to bonus to research on a subject of your designation. So like we literally have a spoiler feat in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. I'm. So, I, I have no issue with that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that like it is a potential problem area to be like, what is the uh it, like. It, I think it has to be a defined subject, right? Like it has to be like like like. Uh, on the subject of D&D, &D, like, 
dwarves have that inherent feat where they like know dwarven architecture, right? Right. That is, it, it is pointed and direct, and that's why I think it works. Okay, and so it, I'll I'll put the uh, add on here just specific subject of your designation. Yeah. Okay, I think that works. And then once per session, attack twice. That seems really straightforward. Yeah, love it. Cool. <laughs> uh, where instead you would attack once. Right. Uh, Arache plus one resistance to an effective. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, going back to this, would they normally attack once? Don't we use action points? We do. So this is what this is. This is why I put where instead you would attack once. It is just like saying that you hit twice with uh, an attack. But couldn't I uh, use? But couldn't I use all my action points to attack twice? You could. But this is this is what this is saying that like it, it's not it, that at no cost of action point. Oh, oh, yeah, I yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in one second. I, mean, I, I I even think we could put in like utilizing the same role. So like you just like it's like a bop, bop. it's yeah. speed bag. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um. All right. So plus one resistance to a specific. I'm gonna just do the same thing we had here before. A specific effect of your choice. Yeah, we'll have to define a fact, like, if, if we're getting into that game, like, as far as, like, resistances and stuff. Right, we'll poisoned, blinded, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Uh, once per session, uh, move vertically as if you were moving across. Yeah, that... I feel like that makes sense. Especially now that we have designed fucking uh, Error Rache with fucking wings on their goddamn skull, it makes sense that you can't do it a lot, because these are mostly for, like... Try to fuck, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay, pick a uh, rare I, metal. We can combine these, I think. Uh, uh, pure metal and uh, alloy boy? Yeah, so pick a rare metal of your choice to be made of, uh, and when you come across an item made of that, you can identify it. Oh, so that like, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So it's cool because you get like an automatic identifier, which would be dope if you have like a relic that you're looking for or like uh, you come across like some sort of magic item or whatever. And like, OK, cool. I know what this does because like we're in tune. Right. But, like it's also super situational. Right. Yeah. OK, cool. Uh, All right. Awoken. Disjointed memories of civilization before the rise of the quick reef. So my issue here, we do have Awoken in our histories. Do we want yeah. to, do we care about that or what? Uh, hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we do care about that, right? Um, okay. Do we want to just rename it or? I will know because I think it like, it fits under. Um, or like do we, we want to just oh, move this under Awoken? I think we want to move that under Awoken and give it a different name. Okay, like, give me a yeah. minute. So for now, I'm just going to. Put that there. And we are going to delete that from here. Okay, Caravan mm -hmm. Life. And a contract. Uh, no, uh, we don't have upkeep anymore. We so, don't. Um, maybe at the beginning of a contract, you get to roll an additional uh, caravan resource of your I choice. I like that. I was about to say, I, we can't go under two. If we go under two, we got to write a new one. Yep. Um, roll one additional. What was it? Uh, roll an additional caravan resource of your choice. Uh, caravan resource of your choice. Actually, I think not at the beginning of a contract. It's um, a during downtime phase. Oh, yeah. At the end of downtime phase, rather. Sorry, I, I am trying to, like harken on using the different phases of our game a lot um, yeah just to get into the habit of it um okay no issue with freaky friday but the name does need to be changed yes it does yeah um, a lot of these do uh move, for example uh, he's dead jim <laughs> yeah uh, uh well okay. don't have an issue with this in particular What do you in think? In your stead. In your stead. 
that's the uh, name you want to replace it? Oh, I'm sorry. I, cha- I changed the human one. Sorry. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, your time as a medic has made you accustomed to delivering bad news and attempt to console a character suffering a recent loss. Roll parlay. I mean, that's... So here's the thing. That's like what you would do anyways, right? <laughs> What do you mean? If I'm trying to console someone, even without this feat, I would probably roll parlay. Yeah, but you wouldn't get to re-roll it. Oh, it's re-roll? Yeah, re-roll oh, parlay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, sure, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, makeshift medicine. Uh, roads between cities are long, barren, and unforgiving. As a field medic in the wild, I don't have mechanics medicine. on makeshift medicine. Um, cool. Um... When attempting uh, to gather medicinal materials, or, uh, or you can you can just gather medicinal like this is like you don't have to make any sort of check on alchemy or anything like that. You can uh, like you can gather medicinal materials with. Uh, you can just gather medicinal materials in the wild. Okay. Um, I don't know what that looks like because we don't have a mechanic for making medicine. <laughs> I mean, it would be like a holistics herbalism role. Like, uh, you could stabilize someone in the wild with medicinal material. Uh, maybe if somebody's dying, we don't have a dying mechanic yet. Well, but... I feel like the Lazarus tap is that, right? Uh, okay. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I do yeah. like you don't have to roll. Uh, for gathering materials in the wild. That seems sure. pretty easy. You can, okay. just, you can just find them. Yeah. Uh, um, Lazarus crazy. tap. Contact with Star Trader Waves giving you new power transfer new once per contract, sacrifice three dice to your highest type in the pool to increase a target's health from zero to five. That's pretty big. Uh, in addition, reduce your movement by half for the remainder of the contract. Um, why does it reduce your movement? The idea is that it consumes energy to perform. And so you're just sluggish after you do it, kind of mm. like straggling behind. That That was the idea that I had. I, I feel like taking three dice from the fool is pretty big. I don't know. I, I don't know if we need the movement loss. It, it, I don't know. It feels a little punishing, but it's also it. like to to give a a little bit of context. Like when I did like my little uh, Emberfight dealer guy, yeah, he only had a health of like five. Yeah. So fair. going um, going from zero to five is fully restoring characters in some cases, not in all of them. Um. But, Can I say right here, though, um, that, like, makeshift medicine is just, like, we don't have a dying mechanic, but makeshift medicine could be, we, we, we gotta figure out what stabilizing versus healing means in our game. Yeah. Um, like, because that's what I'm seeing right now with the croaker. (laughs) We don't, we don't have a lot of defined mechanics for what it means to be, what that would mean, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. give me one sec then, because at the bottom yeah, of this, no. yeah, I'm just going to put it down here. Basic roles, movement, combat. Uh, I think it should go under combat. Makes sense. Yeah. Especially before combat, we're going to need to talk about dying condition. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. That'll be a heading three health and dying. And we'll just put a note in there. Yep. We need to get that done. Okay, cool. So going back to the croaker. Um, yeah, no, I think those are all fine. Then, like, okay. uh, obviously, like, some of them need to be defined more, but I think the systems around it do. So it's like, what are you going to do? Now we get to go through the, like, 18 feats for the spoiler. <laughs> uh, okay, fast and loose. At the beginning of the negotiation phase of the game, roll three interrogation or parlay checks. You may use up to three of these rolls to replace a roll made during contract negotiation. However, you must decide to keep them before negotiation starts. And those you decide to keep, you must use. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Do you? I I was worried that it, like, 
I don't know. It feels like you're rolling. I don't know. I, I, I was kind of like, like, I like it conceptually, but I'm worried about how it will play. But maybe we just need to see how it plays. I think it needs to be play tested, but I kind yeah. of think it's I, I think it's really exciting. Like okay. the idea, the idea that like, oh, shit, I rolled three awful rolls off of fast and loose and I have to use these. Like mm -hmm. you have to be real strategic about where to use them and like what to sacrifice on. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's interesting either way. It's very self-balanced. All right, then. Um, uh, it's all in who you know. Um, once per scene, contested traversal check against a non-hostile target. <sighs> on a success, the archivist will provide you with the name of importance to this character, though they will not tell you the nature of the importance. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, 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 don't think I, I don't think I understand it. It's it, the idea is that like you you know you know the networks of the world and so by traversal you're like oh I I bet this could be an important character this person but you don't know the nature of the relationship sort of idea it's sort of lukewarm I, I I'm down with removing it I I think I would actually say to remove it because I can't yeah. think of any instance in real life where. I've looked at somebody and been like, I bet this person is important to them and like been able no, to I mean, do that. I accurately. Guess the idea is that like we're, we're talking about small settlements and city. I don't know. Why I'm defending it because I said, get rid of it. But I'm saying the idea is that like we're talking about cities and like small settlements. Like there's not a ton going on. So like I know who the major players are in the um, I know. I know who the mayor of your small town is. Right. Right. Like that kind of shit. And like maybe that's more that we something we can play with in the future. But like, yeah. Yeah, I, I I don't think it was particularly strong. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so during combat as a regular action, you may use this feat to draw the attention of one enemy combatant on their turn. They move towards you and are stalwart in their cause. Armor nodes are reduced by two for two turns. I like that. Yeah. It, it gives everyone else a chance to get something and pull him away, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, when attempting to resolve a combat before it breaks out with a negotiable opponent, reroll one die of your choosing. Um, Isn't that just like trying to talk? I don't think this needs a feat around it. I mean, it's a reroll, so it it is a feat. Um, it's it's more than just basic mechanics. Oh, it is a reroll, yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like. I feel like there's some overlap between this and fast and loose. Like one is like re-rolling parlay and the other is like what I consider to be more interesting mechanics. Uh, so I don't know. I, I, I think one is well, a more sure thing, but it's, it's up to you. All right, let's take it out and we, we can like, we can do something similar with a bit more. Well, like we, we, we should probably get this down a little bit anyways. Okay. Which one do you want to take out? Uh, let, let's talk this out. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, okay, when negotiating with rival peddlers on the side of a job, reroll parlay once per contract to get your point across. I feel like this is vague and very specific use case, but it yeah. could have interesting... Sure, I mean, like, we can keep it, but we should definitely talk about expanding its use. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to make it into the alpha quick start, but yeah. maybe when we do the 1E. Yeah. Uh, uh, twice during a rigged. session, you may return a spent die to the caravan resource pool, but in doing so, double the upkeep cost. Well, we don't have an upkeep cost anymore. Um, yeah, um, I think you can just once per session return a spent die to the caravan resource pool. Okay. I said twice, but we could just do it once, I think. And uh, I then think... that gives us upward lateral growth for the feats coming off of it, right? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree. Um, okay, so like the cost of 10 petty coin, you're able to wait out and notice potential leads, and the archivist will provide you with a minor piece of relevant information. Is this, so is this uh, 10 petty coin anytime I want it? Yeah, I think so. It's, it's like you're bribing and working the streets for info. Okay. Um, and it's basically the difference between this and just rolling to bribe someone is that it's, it's a sure, it's, it's a sure thing. Yeah. It's a sure thing. Ah, uh, this is one of those things where like, 
I still need to define a lot more of the economy in this world. I don't know how right. much 10 petty coin is. I think for now it's fine. We'll play test it and we can come back to it. Sure. Um, okay. Unwatched back. When an enemy combatant is engaged with a number, another member of the caravan. Uh, you make a successful attack of the combatant at the cost of three health and three armor heads from your ally. <laughs> uh, so you're hitting them when they're distracted. So like uh, that is a yeah. lot of health and a lot of armor based on what yeah. we know about our derived derived statistics. Well, and armor nodes don't. I mean, they do. Does armor have a plate? I can't remember. I yeah, feel like we said it does. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it could be. I mean, the thing is, it could be a big old hit. So, like, I, I'm more apt to start it high um, and have and play the cost. Test it. Yeah, or yeah. And like have the cost lower through progression. Yeah, I'm down with that. Yeah. Um, okay, so a spoiler may exchange caravan resources for petty coin. Coin. Oh, uh, yeah. Choose roll one caravan resource and take the resulting value as one, one PC. Huh, okay. So are we are we doing this with actual morale points, like the opportunity to roll for caravan resources, or are we doing this for specific dice? Once dice are in the pool, like I I, I don't think you can take it from choices. It has to be. First off, this is a great feat for like uh, the party in the beginning uh, when they have a bunch of die in front of them. They're like, oh, we can get petty coin to pay for this. Yeah, and especially. If, yeah. And it, it is one that is going to be making them kick themselves later on. Yeah, I like it. OK, sick. I like the combination spoiler and dealer a lot more. I do, too. I think it makes a lot of sense. All right, Rope Walker. Cost of two action nodes during combat sequences when your movement would normally be considered challenged, you may move as if unchallenged. Real easy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, start a we combat. We change the cost to three action nodes just because we were doing... Oh, for feats. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Although you mean... Um, start a combat. One target of your selection Nate makes a DTV2 check. What was the difficulty you had selected? Because you... It too seems slow. <laughs> yeah, two is real low. Hang on. Um, uh, simple, simple is four. Yeah, no, I've got the uh, table right here. Moderate yeah. is ten. Uh, what do you want this to be? Moderate, difficult. What are you thinking? DD, uh, if they fail, they reduce their armor. Uh, I think it's got to be at least thirteen, right? Yeah. Okay. So thirteen. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, one sec. There it is. If they get no successes, the weakness carries over the next time you face them in the field of battle. At the start of combat, one target of your son with a DD13 check. If they fail, they reduce their armor nodes. I don't think we need this um, last sentence. Yeah, because it's not, we're not working on a number of successes. Yeah. 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 Maybe if it's a crit fail, that would be how that would. But um, I don't know if we yeah. even want to. Yeah, I think we already defined that, like, critical successes and critical failures, I think we had a bit of a definition for, where things are doubly as effective or half as effective. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, no better place to learn. Ba, 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 ba. Um, at any point where you may have to make an appraisal roll to learn the value or effects of a relic, you may instead sacrifice a die from the caravan resources pool and receive an automatic success. So, yeah, it's, it's yeah. just an identification. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, choose Grace or Skullduggery whenever you make the skill check and you are in a scene of your own, you may roll an additional D4. So we have both Sk Grace and Skullduggery skill, right? Uh, yes. I'm that's fine. Sure. I think that that's fine. Yeah, they're both there. Okay. Yeah, I don't have an issue with that. Yeah, it's, it's it's that thing we're talking about again, where it's like separating the party, so it's inherently yeah. dangerous. Uh, so one sec. So whenever you make this skill check uh, during a solo scene. Okay. Uh, what's good for the goose? <laughs> At any time during play, Shepard may use this feat to temporarily reduce a die evolution. We're not using die evolution anymore, right? Oh, we can just get rid of that, I think. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, yeah, it truly doesn't make me a revenue. Any point you may spend a die from the caravan resource pool as an instant success for anything. It, but this is what it had upkeep though, so um, oh damn, right? yeah, that was the balancing fact for it. Um, uh, okay, hmm, maybe just once per contract, um, or at the cost of an item or something. I don't, I don't know. Once per contract, I think, is fine. Um, yeah. The instant success would be sweet. Well, it's it, I, I worry that that's like a PBTA thing. Like if I was a shepherd playing that, I would definitely reserve that feat for like one shotting the big bad and... I don't know, taking a lot of... I mean, of well, th- th- this is the thing. It's an instant success, like, an instant success doesn't mean you murder something in our games, right? Like... It's just uh, you hit. succeed at, like, opening a door or yeah, something you or would normally making, do a check for. Making a hit, yeah. Like, you're not, like... Okay. Um, so, on a skill check. Yeah. Cool. Um. All right. He lives a hard place between the deities of Nanak, the beast. Of, why am I reading all that? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, don't. We're making the assist roll with more than. Uh, we got two wids in there. With yeah. more than one other member of the caravan. And the assisted party may take it. Well, it may add an additional to their die. Well, I don't think this works anymore. Um... But they don't have. They don't have their own solo die pool. Were we working with solo die pools? I don't think ever. I don't know what I wrote here. Roll, roll, erase it. Yeah. Erase it all. Done. Uh, oh, sure. Uh, why am I doing that? Uh, As a reaction, a shepherd may apply armor nodes to an adjacent village tower. Reduce your armor nodes by X and add armor nodes uh, are vulnerable. Uh, I just think, like, you don't get them back. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what it is, right? You just <laughs> these nodes cannot be uh, replaced. Is the word? Well, you, you just like you can get them back in your downtime phase, but like you won't, you don't get them back for, like until dur- until after the contract. Uh, it cannot phase, be replaced but... until after until the contract downtime phase is completed, and the downtime phase has started. Yeah, I'm down with that. I don't even think they need to be resist half as much damage because that, that seems like a lot of mechanizing for a player to keep track of. Um, yeah, it's also I if would, they can't I be put back, that. if they can't be put back on, that's also pretty punishing in and of itself. Yeah, and someone else is like sick, <laughs> yeah. full armor right now. <laughs> uh, bolstered bulwark. Um, when using, you may remove two die from the caravan dice pool. Uh, roll the first to determine X rounds and the second to determine Y nodes. Apply to your armor nodes for X rounds or until combat. And, okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, that's ridiculous, though. That's um, insane. Maybe this is a high level feat, maybe not a starting feat. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just going to put a note there. Not a starter. High level. Um, okay. So. Uh, enter the shepherd. Not just protecting your body. A shepherd can keep the caravan intact too. Grant, um, Two armor notes to succeed automatically on any repair roll. Cool. Okay, yeah, I'm down with that. I don't think they need to be repurchased. I don't think we need this, because we already have mechanics for that. Okay, yeah. Um, And since we have, you have to do the job vignettes in order to refill things, we can remove both those sentences. Cool. Yeah. All right, back at the Pharaoh. <laughs> back at a lot of them, right? And this yeah. is going to be a lot. Um, no, we actually removed quite a bit of the Pharaoh's things. We did. Uh, uh, at the expense of half your action points and all complex for giving contract, you ensure that your caravan is not only well fit. Uh, we don't have upkeep. Oh, that's right, we don't. This is gone. Yeah. Yeah. 
Ooh, I was gonna say because that's brutal, anyways. That is. Uh, that, that, I, I wouldn't choose that. You learned how to survive on very little uh, when taking watch from it. You choose to reroll for a better result. The cost of one type, uh, one what? die type worth HP. You can lose HP to make sure. Uh, I don't even think it needs to be a night sleep. You can just keep watch uh, for for surprise attacks, kind of thing. Is is the idea at the cost of HP nodes? Okay, so take out for the night, or yeah, when taking watch, you may choose to reroll for a better result at the cost of one d four. We just do one d four worth of HP nodes. Yeah, I think that works. Uh, when <laughs> oh, turn this caravan around, when, well, I love the idea that Pharaoh is a lot more mother way now. <laughs> uh, when calling an internal dispute between NPCs and the caravan, you may settle the dispute however you see fit at the cost of we don't have morale, we don't, uh, but at, at the cost of we do uh, have morale of, points. Ooh, yeah, um. Hmm. Uh, without uh, and uh, a fight between two NPCs would be marks on their disfavor track, which is dangerous for the job. So uh, you may uh, reduce each NPC's disfavor at the cost of morale. Okay, one sec. Um, so reduce each NPC's disfavor track. track. At the cost of one morale? Uh, we can do just X and X. Have it be like, you can do as many as you want. Keep their disfavor oh, down. Okay. But yeah, it's a, it's a huge cost uh, of, yeah. By X nodes. Um, at the cost of X morale. Yeah, hang on. Uh, use X morale points to reduce okay that works for you yeah cool uh when commanding a subordinate in your caravan reroll parlay and interrogation giving orders at the expense of oh this is another morale thing yeah so here's the thing um i i, I think uh you could just do this as commanding presence i think remove in your caravan is the idea that you are like a pharaoh. You you could do this at other people too. Um, right. So I think we can remove the caravan distinction. You may reroll parlays and interrogation when giving orders at the expense of the caravan die. We just do it at the expense of a uh, uh, caravan resource. Uh, caravan. Wait, at the caravan resource, you mean caravan point or? Uh, no, like it, this. So this is like out in the world. We have caravan resources. You can get a reroll when commanding somebody, but you just take one of those die out of the center pool. Oh, duh. A caravan yeah. resource from the caravan die pool. Um, should we clarify what kind of, uh, like D4, D12, D6, or anything so, like that? They're, they're all kind of inherently useful. Uh, like, that's the thing. Like, a D4 is useful because there's a higher chance of critting. A D12 is useful because it's very swingy. The middle die are useful because they're not quite as swingy. Like, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, all the die, like, from looking at it, like, all the die are inherently useful in our system. Okay, cool. Uh, at the cost of three die from the caravan resource pool of the archivist's choice, you may pull 1d4 creatures of fate from the ether. Roll nebula table for Ooh, their we tags. Don't have, we don't yeah. have that. I like the idea, but... Let's remove it. Yeah. It's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot, yeah. lot. Uh, you're not a... <sighs> Uh, when you lose health nodes as a reaction, oh, we got a reaction feed. We got to make more of these bad boys. Uh, by the way, cool. Just in, yeah, um, you made a nebula table. Did we make a nebula table somewhere? No, I had made a. Uh, I had made a. 
Uh, you may roll Magum to perform a blast of energy. Or just perform a magical attack, I think. Yeah, well. perform a blast yeah. of nebulae on the target, causing, what are we thinking? 1d4, 1d6? Man, it's tough, because we don't have the feats, item feats written out, but uh, let's... Uh, yeah, let's just call it 1d6. Yeah, right we're just going to go 1d6 for the moment. Yeah. Um... Demic coins. Was no. Mm. As an action, you may barter fifteen petty coin and make an alchemy check against the. We don't have alchemy anymore. Uh, unsuccess, the PC is lost. If you choose unity, you may swap. Whoa. Um, you may. Use... How about this? Uh, you may use uh, petty coin. Because we talked about petty coin being magic, so this makes sense that it's a magic feat, like yep. utilizing the magic uh, to change the disposition tag of a of an NPC. Okay, so take out all that and just to change the disposition of an NPC. Yeah, and I think we should lower the cost because fifteen's high, right? Yeah. Let's just do five because it's five petty coin, and you have to make a magum check. Yeah, I think that works. Uh, you can't, uh, so this, this is one where it's like, does the, this is a question I had for you. Yeah. So the, the idea of this is like based on the idea of, uh, what are they called in Shadowrun? Um, ava not avatars, um, adepts, adepts, right? Yes. So does this block you from using other trees on this? No. Like, well, because they, uh, you, you can't cast magic spells like some other casters. That's why I say that. Oh. Yeah. I... Maybe... Huh. I mean, I... We could just remove that flavor text and just say you can empower your body with... Yeah, I was going to say, I had, I think, written that more as just kind of a cool narrative idea. But yeah, yeah. I'm very down with that. All right, cool. Uh, uh, roll Magnum once per contract and apply uh, all extra bonuses. Cool. So we have to define what the DTV is here. Oh, I see. So we make it like a 13, and then if I get a 15, I can apply two? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um. Yeah, let's start at a 13. Yeah. One second here. DTV 13. Madam check once per contract. Apply. I don't think bonus successes is the right word. Um, uh, 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 apply the difference to your. And apply anything extra. I just say apply the difference. Well, does that mean so if I roll under a 13, then I would subtract uh that's a good point i guess uh no uh ooh, that's ooh, i don't hate that though i don't hate it either but man that would suck if you like crit fail that yeah i, I don't think we want that to be like we or, don't we could, like... or we could lower the dtv no I, I i think that we should we should do it as a apply anything extra yeah apply, uh it, yeah if you roll an excess apply anything extra to your uh, apply anything extra. Uh... But, but, yeah, here's the thing. It should be you always get one, right? If I need it, like, I get one. Okay. Um, if you do not roll above the DTV, take one additional node yep. to be placed where you wish. Okay, cool with um, that. I don't think we need to... I, I don't think this last sentence needs to be there. Yeah, I'm good with that, too. Yeah. Uh, okay! <laughs> Mage uh, Rage! Mage uh, Rage 4! Once per contract, you may reroll attack against a magic user. Sure. Um, okay. Yeah, I like that. I, I'd say even once per session, that would be cool. I'm actually down with that, too. Yeah. Uh, plus one to Brutality, minus one to Logica. Seems... I like this, and in playtesting, people like this one. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Um, 
beginning conflict, take first action to roll an extra 1d6 to add to action points. Uh, you lose your turn with no additional... Wait, hold on. You lose your turn with no additional points, and then you do not auto-roll. Whoa, what? What is auto-roll? I don't know. See, I, I would just cut that at you lose your turn. Yeah, wait, hold on, though. How does that work? Because we don't have turns. We have phases in our initiative system. If you hold your bodies to a razor jet, describe the training, where it was, who taught you, and, and you know, at the beginning of every conflict, take your first action to roll an extra 1d6 to add to your... Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, every conflict, take... Okay. If you roll a 1, you lose... Uh, you cannot act uh, during the party's uh, initiative phase. Act during the party's initiative phase. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, hey, look at us. We're two thirds of the way. Unfortunately, oh, I'm gonna stand up and walk around for a minute. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, histories are very long. So, oh, oh, oh. man. We're getting through it. We are. I'm actually really pleased at how many of these seem to still work. Um, yeah, I am too. I, I was kind of I was kind of expecting for none of these to make any sense. So, yeah, I'm a, uh, I'm a little we, bit. Stoked. We still got time for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's get through this, and then let's just plant a, a flag in um, our goddamn uh, caravan creation, so that we can have that settled. Yeah, uh, and then and then off stream, I will make some more quirks and jobs. And if you want to do the same, that would be dope. Yeah, no, that works. <laughs> uh, okay, so first history: Tech Oracle Helix calls. Um, when attempting a networks role, well, networks doesn't exist anymore. So, uh, what are we using? Uh, when using the clockwork approach. Man, I want to call them approaches now. Right? Um, I like approaches. Okay, with a little tech, you may choose to re-roll once if you're unsatisfied. I, I don't need to. But, yeah, why else, why else would you re-roll? I'm satisfied, but I like dice. I like it, but I think I can do better. Yeah, I love when your dog looks at you like that. Yeah. What a boy. <laughs> uh, okay. Old uh, so now we have to change this to uh, old tech security systems or more. Uh, real clockwork, so that can't work. When using a clockwork approach again. A single security device of your choosing does not see you as a threat and allows you to pass. Um, Can we change attributes to approaches? Uh, that's fine. Do you want to do this as obfuscate? Doesn't see you and allows you to pass? Uh, so here's the thing. It's, it's because of your communication with, uh, tech though, right? It's because yeah. you're a tech oracle. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So roll obfuscation Obfusc at the beginning of a contract. Okay. Well, we can't do that. We don't roll obfuscation. That's no, an approach. If you, yep. If you use, uh, use an obfuscation approach on a skill of your choice. Uh, if successful, uh, roll obfuscate, uh, use an, uh, hmm. Roll obfuscation, what? Roll off, roll an obfuscation approach. At, at, no, I was going to say it says at a skill of your choice. And then the archivist will describe something pertinent in that field. So if you're making a roll on clock uh, on a like, uh, sorry, I don't even have our shit memorized anymore because we changed everything. Yeah. Um, 
purchase skills. Uh, so if I'm like, uh, if I'm making a parlay roll, it will be something about the contract. If I'm making a repair roll, it will be something about like the machine, you know, like, um, okay. it, it, yeah. I like that because it gives it a little bit more GM fiat, which we don't have a ton of. All right, so one sec. So an important piece of information relating to... Okay, uh, about the coming contract... In the context of your... Yeah, relating to your chosen skill. Yeah. Okay, that, and that, that makes sense? Yeah, I think that works. Okay, cool. And I think we can get rid of that because yeah. choosing the skill kind of yeah, narrows it that makes down it like, a little bit. Yeah. Um, you actually aren't... <laughs> ever loved this too, by the way. <laughs> You're Actually, kidding. in my in my in my uh, work group, uh, we had somebody choose Whispers of Delphi and somebody choose Fraud. Oh, that's tight. <laughs> yeah. One one person who's actually a seer and one who's <laughs> not. They're just like, oh yeah, I, I feel it too. That's exactly what they were like. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, totally. What he said. <laughs> that's a great idea. Very, uh, very good. Uh, Roll deduction. <laughs> On a success, you learn the enemy's stance and special. That's cool. I like that. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm down with that. All right. Describe the spirit. Gain one in a skill of your choosing, explaining how the demi knot helps with this skill. <laughs> I don't <laughs> hate have one of these now because they were both Because the they same were the same thing. thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm actually going to get rid of that entirely. Um... um. I don't have a problem with little voice in my head. Um, no, 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 no. I think it's fine. Um, so maybe, maybe instead of focusing on the mask itself, maybe this one can focus on actually being a pirate. Or, or maybe it can focus on like um, when people fucking hate you. What that's like. <laughs> how that can be. How it can be useful when people hate you. Mm. Uh, being a uh, ooh. Uh, Intimidation, right? Like this, uh, when making a ferocity approach on a social skill, gain a uh, g gain an additional d4. People are scared of the nocturne. So, when using a ferocity approach um, for a social skill check, what was it? Gain plus one. Uh, gain a, diff a d4, an additional d4 to your roll. Gain one d4. Uh, years. Like fearful presence, uh, uh, fears of the sky, um, terror uh, of the sky. Uh, um, float and air. All right. Uh, touch of Kaja. Who's Kaja? I don't know. Some god I made up. God. Uh, <laughs> cool. I like it. Uh, your time in slumber is uh, when attempting to control this. L oh, whoa, 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 whoa. An element of your choosing. Roll mag of. Oh, so this is kind of like uh, pure metal, right? A little bit. Yeah. This yeah, is very, uh, this is very much. I think I was rewatching Avatar when. <laughs> when I so came up element, with this idea. Like, we gotta define element then, right? Like, um... Yeah. Uh, control... Well, uh, let's, let's see. Awoken has a lot to do with tech. Maybe it is, like, very similar to the Metal Boy, except, like, when interacting with this kind of metal, you get a plus one. I think it plays into that kind of rust punk aesthetic we have. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. Uh, uh, pick a material. Control over a material of your choosing. Um, so when we talk about material, I'm just going to leave, I guess, archivist discretion. Applies. Yeah, because if somebody's like, oh, claw, a claw, a claw, so I'm going to make his cloak choke him. Like, fuck yeah. off. That's not, that's not how we roll. That's not how this task works. Uh, so when attempting to control this element, 
Oh, you definitely were watching Avatar, huh? Oh, I definitely was. <laughs> <laughs> I um, just steal yeah. things. Uh, <laughs> Anytime you make a spiritual magical damage, roll a d4 minus one when you... Uh, uh, wait, wait, we, we still need to do Touch of, t touch of Kaja. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I started shooting ahead. Uh, when attempting to control this element using the Magum approach, what, just take a plus one? Yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry. Now go ahead. Okay. Uh, anytime you take spiritual or magical damage, roll a d4 minus one, which you may use as additional armor nodes for this attack only. Sure, I like it. Yeah, so it's just an extra soak. Um, yeah. I think we could just take spiritual away and just anytime we're doing... Someone's dealing magical damage. Yeah. Values, but yeah. Uh, and this is uh, the yeah. Awoken feat we moved down. Um... Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, about the old world, I think. Oh, Rip Scallion, because you're vaping so much. Ooh, Crab Boy. This, <laughs> this is a game about vaping. <laughs> Welcome, whoever just entered this, this is, room. This is a game about <laughs> fat clouds. <laughs> This is a game about vape. Uh, okay. It's not. It's not a game about vape, everyone. Foods. Oh, Bear Necessities is a uh, croaker roll. Or, well, I guess it's not. Yeah. That's for uh, food. And the other one was yeah. for medicine. It's we very also similar. don't have herbalism or fauna. Uh, whenever you're making a traversal roll to... Man, we have like a lot of the... Like a couple of these food things crop up. Is that like... Is that something we're doing? I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't think I like it. I, I just don't either. Let's yeah, just get rid of it. Get rid of it. Slash and burn. Uh, okay. Time. Whoa. Fifty petty coin. Holy hell! No. I don't think so. <laughs> so I was trying to figure out what. A little, I think five works there because it's a little side project, right? Yeah, I think five is good. A little pocket <laughs> change. Uh, you've had to scrape and beg for much or all of your life, which has given you a good sense of reading what people reroll when assessing what valuable summit. Yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, no, I'm down with that too. I, I like hardened too. Uh, take a plus one to composure. Is that too much? It's it's a skill die evolution, but I, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. People, people seem to like those ones. They're good starter ones. Uh, dark connections. We're not doing die evolution. So what is this actually? Name of the group. Describe briefly what they do. Uh, uh, just uh, take a bonus D four when interacting with on, on any die rolls. For interacting with them. Okay. Cool. Uh, mm. I think that I like that too because it leaves it open to like, if I'm like, if I, my dark connection is like I'm hunting these dudes down, then like my bonus D4 could be bonus on attack rolls because I know they're like how they function as a group. Uh, I like that a lot. Yeah, no, I'm down with that. Okay. City Denizen, heart of the community. Um, describe where your community is. Gain an additional D8 to rolls when making checks in this community. Makes We're sense because it's it's very specific, right? That's what I was going to say is it's really overpowered locally. My biggest thing is... What if we have somebody who's like, well, my character is from Ishtas, which is like one of the three major metropolises. Like you're going to be dealing with like contracts there. You're going to be dealing with uh, like, yeah, you, you potentially might even like we talked about how a contract might not be just diving into like ruins or whatever. It could be actually like yeah, a social yeah, thing. So yeah, like maybe we, maybe we OK, here's what we do. Bring it to a D4. Okay. Uh, and then we can have it go up, you know, as okay. the game progresses. All right. Yeah, I'm down with that. Yeah. Um. Uh, but, 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 oh, maybe, maybe this once per scene. 
We can do this uh, once per scene when making a check. So that way it's not like every check in this scene in this bar. I like that. Yeah. Okay, so once per scene. I I even think we can keep it as a D4 once per scene because that's still a lot, right? Like it's- Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, So gain an additional 1D4 once per scene. Okay, cool. We don't have tribalism. We removed the racist approach. Yeah, that's gone. Um, so are we taking holistics? Yeah. Uh, one second here. Ooh, I thought it was just going to be like on character creation. I think both are applicable. Maybe you take a plus one on. I guess it's the same thing. It's really the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I think here's the thing. I, I think like putting it in character. People like that character creation. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Especially for the first ones. Okay. Cool. All right, City Denizen. Um. Now this is what sometimes I like. This to, is the same uh, thing as where everybody knows your name. Uh. Yes, it is. Uh. It's just different context. Uh, yeah. Uh, so here's um, when outside. Uh, um, let's think of rural things, right? Um, Farms, corn, corn. Wheat. <laughs> Did you just say corn? <laughs> yep, that's that was it. <laughs> oh, corn! You said <laughs> I said corn. <laughs> like a like a bull's horn. Horn. I said corn. <laughs> corn. I, I'm from a farm. Horn. <laughs> it's like what an alien says. Um, yeah, that's three aliens in a skin suit. That's a different game. <laughs> uh, God, playing that game actually was very fun. Um, holy anniversary. Man, I don't know. Uh, uh, well, rural we don't even upbringing. we don't even have to stick with the rural upbringing thing. I mean, is there another like city denizen thing? I think. Well, here's the thing: just uh, when, when making a traversal roll outside of a uh, outside of a like population, right? Take a plus one. Okay. Making a traversal roll in the wilds. Take a like an additional D four or a plus one yeah. or whatever. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, one D four. Additional one D four. Okay, tight. Uh, okay, when attempting to disappear into a crowd, reroll obfuscation. Sure. Cool. Um. So that's my specialty. Uh. Choose which crafts you excel at. Oh, this is Caravan Resources again. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, that's my specialty. Um, uh, gate. Uh, whew, uh, whew. um, Maybe something yeah. having to do with like community goals. Like if your craft, Ooh. if your craft pertains to a community goal like you get there faster um uh, uh treat all so, so like we have a so i imagine community goals are something like a skill che- like uh like like a, an extended skill test right um that's how i would fashion them like it, it's accomplishing a set of things in order to make something work again um, by gathering resources, that kind of thing. So, so in that context, your skills for a particular craft associate it uh, excels the average worker. Choose one of these crafts to excel at. Um, it. Uh, mm, I, I, I like where your head's at. I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to phrase it. Um. um so, if the selected craft pertains to the community the current resource. community goal for the caravan uh what do you think they gain like an extra 1d4 
that you can uh, roll because, in downtime or i don't know because it's like so specific it has to be it, it only has to do with downtime phase stuff and working towards the larger community goal right so i guess that's not only downtime phase stuff because you're working towards your community goal during dives stuff if you find something that's significant right um but it is something that has to be pertaining to your particular craft right which is very specific yeah so I, I think be, and because these community goals shift a lot, maybe treat su any success you make as a critical success working towards that goal. If it's pertaining to your craft. So hang on, if I like if I'm a potter or something and I make a pot and I succeed at the role, it's an automatic crit success. Yeah, which would get us to where it's our crit our, our our goal faster because critical goal. I mean, a critical success would get us there quicker, right? I suppose so. I feel like I could select a very general skill set. Like I'm a construction worker. That's my skill, and then I'm a, yeah, every, I'm a, I'm everything a, I'm a, involved with construction suddenly becomes like yeah, we do it in like a day. Well, so like here's the thing though. I mean, like we have to find differences in like craft already and yeah. then we have a blacksmith and a machinist like um i don't know like I maybe mean, gotta think about this one yeah same tell you what let's come back to it sure. um okay when attempting to assess the value of an artifact you may re-roll on a failure sounds good to sure. me um business lobes change it <sighs> my baby why <laughs> Uh, good sense of business. This is all. I'm trying to negotiate a point in contract. You may reroll a die. I love it. Um, I don't know. Silver tongue, something dumb and not as cool <laughs> as business slopes. About uh, yeah, that's fine. Sorry. <laughs> You're a respected merchant in your territory. Choose that territory. Mm, we yeah. plus one I, star ratings taking on contracts get, in that area. Yeah. Uh, so we do have. Um, I don't know. Well, like obviously, we need to work on contract negotiation. Is the issue here? Yeah. I don't hate the idea. I don't hate the central conceit of it. Um. Because I mean, it does. It does occasionally happen. Like I'm not. It. It's not. At least, um, yeah. Well, why plus... wouldn't my Why wouldn't my caravan just hunker down in that territory and only take contracts plus what we have in order to get to the max contract as soon as we could, and then stay there? Huh. There's no point in moving at that point, right? Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, um, maybe, um, maybe, maybe gain. Like one time only. Like well, I mean, like one time use feels also weak for a feat that's supposed to define you, right? Yeah, it's either too it's either too powerful or too weak. Yeah. Uh, uh, ooh 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 ooh! Knowledge of the area. Um. So like you're, you're a magnate, you know. Um. Maybe you know. You go in knowing. Uh, if you're in that area, the archivist has to tell you um, the adventure rating, basically. It's more of a meta feat, but, like, if I know how many, uh, like, the amount of resources in our, my art of, uh why am I trying to call him an artificer? Um, my uh, archivist has, like, we might prep a bit more for a uh, specific contract. Okay. Um, so adventure rating, etc. It still feels kind of vague, um, but I don't, I don't hate it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think like I don't even think etc. I think you know the adventure rating, so I know generally the size of his dice pool. Okay. Oh, that actually is yeah. Yeah. Uh, the adventure rating. contract okay um all right confluence of the builders um remove one rank mm -hmm. in whatever and receive an additional rank in one of these two 
That's cool well, with me. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, well, oh, no, it can't be. Yep, we don't have alchemy. Be, yeah, uh, let's change these to two approaches. Uh, remove one rank in either clockwork or ferocity approach, and let's take a look. At, uh, it'd be nebulae uh, or um, logica? Adaptation? Uh... I was going to say Nebulae or um, Holistics. Yeah, I'm down with that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, twice per session may reroll a failed check at the cost of two petty coin. Oh, shit, no, because it's, it's receiving an additional feat, Taylor. Oh, fuck. No, okay, so here's it. Receive an additional feat in... Uh, in in uh in, in any of the feet things, right? Receive an additional feet in species uh from from any of them, history, province, or species? Yeah, yeah. Whatever. So just you're... an additional feat of your choosing. Yeah. Cool. I mean it has to be in the realm of your shit. Like, yeah, you, you, I can't I can't choose a human feat if I'm a well, why not, Corey? I mean, why not? Yeah. Uh, okay. We kind of do mean that. So, um, twice per session, reroll a failed check, cost of two petty coin each. Sure. Okay, cool. Um, once per negotiation, reroll a failed negotiation roll. I feel like we have that already. Sure, we do. Um, in, this, uh, uh, in the cities. No. We don't need that. Um, it's tossing uh, gaining leverage against those. Who, well, okay, let's look at the flavor text here. Gaining leverage against those once per negotiation. Uh, well, so it doesn't even have to be contract negotiation. It's nature of politics within the High Council of Ishtas. So which let's is think. Tough, yeah, let's think beyond just negotiation. I mean, like yeah. public speaking. Um, <laughs> When using a social skill die in the ferocity approach. That's like specific, but like very ish toss, right? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, so. Ferocity um, parlay, was it? I think when making a, a social a social skill die roll with the ferocity approach, oh, that okay. way it's it's got a bit more breadth to it, and the GM could be like, "Eh, this this is on the edge," but yeah, I think it counts here. That kind of thing. Those moments are cool in games. Uh, oh, what? Hey. Take one d four. That old dorks. Oh. Oh, nice. <laughs> I didn't even see that. Uh, yeah, take a, take a, take an additional 1d4. Um, Hell yeah, plus two to rip in the fattest club. <laughs> uh, cool. Okay. Uh, Once per session, you may make a parlay check with plus two modifier against a non-combative NPC to reduce the hostility check upon entering the scene. What is a hostility check? Uh, it's like what uh, to we could just uh, to change the um, uh, disposition of an NPC when entering the scene. Isn't that also something we already did? I'm sure we played around with it, but I think like different ways of doing it is fine. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Shin. Remainder. Scene. I, I like this too. Because someone who's normally surly becomes. <laughs> Wait, which okay. one are we on? Okay. Uh, Vagabond. Keep creeping, rolling, baby. Creeping fury. Um, so when in forested areas, you may trade your movement nodes to make an irresistible attack. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Ooh, when you roll an interrogation check, you may instead roll brutality. I like that too. Um, 
interrogation anymore. So when making a parlay, parlay yeah, yep, yeah. Okay. Uh, when using the escape intent, take minus three HP nodes instead of minus um, two, but get a plus three to your movement. No. Yeah, like that. Uh, pertinent piece of historical information concerning the contracted adventure. Sure. Okay. Down. <laughs> Seems good. Yeah. Uh, uh, roll 1d10, 1 to 6, find nothing. 7 to 10, find an extra petty coin tucked away. I like that one too. Okay, cool. Uh, when making a successful movement that utilizes grace, you may perform a free attack that utilizes the results of that dice roll. Use a, utilizing the results of your grace roll instead of yeah. the attack roll. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, I think that's tight. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you may move as if you had an additional four movement nodes when facing off with creatures of a larger tag size than you, as long as your movement finishes in a hex adjacent to them. Wow, that is specific, but I like it. Yeah. It's like you're good at like moving. I mean, like this you're, is you're basically moving, like, you're moving you in move. for the kill. This is this is yeah. a hunter. Yeah. It was somebody who's hunted giant snakes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm down with that. Yeah. Uh, okay, you can smell blood in the water when an enemy combatant is in an escape attempt and you are uh, in an offensive attempt. Combat actions that pursue direct harm gain an additional D4. I think that's tight. I do too. I like our, I want to get dip, dip into our initiative phases more because I'm like, the yeah. more I read about it, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm very excited about this. Yeah, the Depth Hunter is really cool. Yeah, I, I agree. I would definitely play a Depth Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> I'd play a little Tunneler Depth Hunter and be kick-ass. Uh, once per session, when making an attempt to subdue but not kill a target, should they succeed on their resistance, they have to re-roll and take the lower of the two results. Hold okay. On, I missed all of that. Once per session, when making an attempt to subdue but not kill it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, fail an interrogation check, take, or make a TDV seven value check for deduction to get a valuable piece of information. Uh, how difficult do you want this to actually be? Let's make it a 10. 10? Okay. Yeah. And, uh, cause seven's easy, 10's moderate. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, I'm cool with that otherwise. Um, okay. Custom to heat. When resisting the effects of fire, gain an additional plus two to damage resistance. To armor nodes. Yeah. And when you're in a scene with the other party member, you may count an assist roll as an automatic success. I'm thinking maybe once per contract to this. Or maybe once per session. Yeah, so, some something to limit this. It's just a little bit OP. Yeah. Okay. Oh. We did it. It's all of them. They did it. Hell yeah. Are you ready to be liberated? Oh, God. I know. We're doing a lot of work right now. We are. We're like redoing our whole fucking game. Um, um, let's change the name of attributes to approaches, and I'm going to go ahead and do that in the character sheet as well. Okay, yeah. Um, so I'm going to bring this here. Approaches. Okay, this needs to be a heading three. That's cool! Now we're like approaches and skills. Now we're not a D&D &D clone. Now we're an L5R clone. <laughs> we're an L5R and Pathfinder clone. <laughs> Actually, you know what? This game has a lot of elements of L5R in the approaches. It's got a lot of elements of um, Pathfinder with beats and like uh, actually, I think it's more more sa like and Savage Worlds too. There's there's some Savage World flair in there. A little for bit sure. of Savage World. I I feel like there's some cyberpunk in here as far as like you're rolling just a single die, um, yeah. and I feel like the DTV is a fairly similar system to what they have in Cyberpunk too. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, dog. Let's see here. Remember when I freaked myself out about my character sheet when it didn't work? Yeah. I felt so bad for you. And it was fun. Okay. Jesus Christ. What what else yeah, do we um, have? To, what else do we have to do? We need to write character uh, caravan creation. We just need to get it done. Let's okay. Let's just do it. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Build your caravan. So um, this is what we had following our session uh, last time around. Oh, shit, Taylor. We need what? to make a word bank for dispositions, too. Oh, okay. I know. <laughs> I know. It's a lot, dude, but hey, we're going to be better for it today. Yeah, we are. Okay. So dispositions, NPCs. Uh, quirks. Um, under caravan creation, I already have the disposition bank. I mean, this is going to be doubly useful too, because it's not just for dispositions of, uh, like it's going to be applicable to our attributes for our caravan. Oh, as I well have... as. I have two sections for caravan. I'm an idiot. Hang on. Okay. You're not an idiot. Uh, Don't say that. Ba, 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 Don't ba. say that about my friend. <laughs> Are you talking shit about my friend? I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing more powerful than kicking your friend's ass for talking bad about themselves. Okay. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to get rid of this. Okay. Caravan creation. Uh, Gross. Hey, you know what I realized the other day, Taylor? What? B before we get to our next cyberpunk session, you better figure out your arm because you still have a fucking critical injury. Yeah. <laughs> yup. Your muscles got unfurled. She bent my arm like a gummy worm and... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, that's not supposed to do that. How are you feeling? I'm tripping pretty hard. <laughs> uh, okay, so we need... So here's the thing. The dispositions have to be... They, they have to be broad... Like, they can't be broad enough where, like... It can't just be friendly, right? Like, because that is... That encompasses a lot of things. Um, right. But they also have to be specific. Ugh. Yeah, things are tough. Yeah, this Let's is very, at, this is yeah. very difficult. How do we categorize humanity? Um, is my question. Um, so let's take a look at our different uh, approaches. I and, actually think oh. I want to have. Hold on. Hold up, carriage. I want to have character oh. caravan creation up here. For anyone joining us, we're boring. For anyone joining us, why? Yeah, so, sorry. We we so, desperately apologize. Uh, so what I have so far um, on on the example caravan one e sheet is threatening, scientific, mystical, and diplomatic. Okay. Uh, one sec. Yep. Give me those again. Uh, threatening, scientific, mystical, and diplomatic. And those are dispositions. 
Yeah, dispositions that we can use for NPCs as well as dispositions that we can use for our uh, caravan attributes. Okay. And that's oh. that's the context we got to think of. Are we trying to uh, expand these into more? Uh, are we trying to think up more dispositions? Yeah, yeah, we just okay. need a bank of them. Uh, well, let's see. There's like, there's definitely like good natured. Um, yeah, how do we, how do we call that? Hmm. Benevolent. Uh, oh, benevolent works. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um. Um. I feel like threatening and scheming would probably be the same, right? Yeah, maybe we should look at our... Uh, well, actually, is it? You can have a loyal person who's threatening. For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think scheming works. Um, Trying to think of the context of our things, too. Like, what does scheming command look like? Um, <laughs> I think that looks like a coup, in all honesty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> what is that... scheming... I think that's somebody who's like quietly trying to like gather people together to take out the pharaoh. Yeah, scheming R and D would be. It's like developing technology, but like also I don't know, saving some of that stuff and like selling it privately. Uh, like, what, 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 like, what does that mean for like our caravan, though? If we chose scheming as our 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 attribute. For R and D. Oh yeah. Um, I I think it works. It's just like right. what kind of tech comes out of a scheming R and D? Right. How would I fulfill scheming? Yeah. To to get those. Uh, the I know how it works for those. people. Um. I guess it would be like. Uh, uh, oh, it'd be like making false tech and shit, yeah, like tech uh, you could use to trick people. I, like, I was gonna say, yeah, it would be it would yeah. be conning people into yeah. into like buying your tech or believing that a certain piece of tech that can't possibly work works. Yeah, yeah. It'd be yeah. it'd be uh, doing a Theranos. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Okay, yeah, I like okay. scheming. Um. Uh, let's see. There's what about like a par a party a party like fun fun like fun loving not like a all right yeah what's a party word um for some reason I keep thinking like boisterous and that's not the word I'm um. Party word. Uh, rocket? No, like. Fun loving? That's not even. Let's, I mean, we could go to thesaurus.com. I'm not above that. Yeah. Uh, Partying. Uh, synonym. Carouse. Um. Oh, celebratory. Merrymaking. I like merrymaking, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh let's see here. Da, 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 da. I like your fat old doing sound not at all. Say what? <laughs> Fat old doing sound Neva. Oh yeah. Oh. Okay. How many of these do we want to have ideally? Well, how many we got? Seven. Yeah, I think we need like more than double that, like for a good game, right? Okay. Yeah. I don't know if we need to have that to start. I think 10 is a good to start with, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For sure, for sure. <laughs> Hang on. Adjectives to describe people. Someone. 
Yeah. And yeah. So I'm just going to I'm just going to throw some out at you here and Hell yeah. we're just going to we're going to do it that way. Adaptable, adventurous, affectionate, ambitious, amiable, compassionate. I think adventurous Adventurous? Well, maybe not, because how does an adventurous commander R and D? Well, adventurous R and D, I see. Adventurous. I think adventurous works, right? Um, maybe. Is it too broad? I, I guess what it is is like you're in a caravan of people who do dangerous delves for a living. I don't know how right. your R and D is especially adventurous. How about stingy? I like stingy. Yeah. <laughs> Stingy's cool. Um, okay. Uh, courageous, courteous, diligent, empathic, exuberant, frank. Hey, diligent and empathic both work. Okay. Um, so diligent and empathic. So uh, let me ask you this, uh, empathic versus benevolent. What do you think is the difference there? Oh, good point. Yeah, I think we pick one of those. I actually like empathic better than benevolent. I do too. Yeah. I think that's just got a little bit more play to it. Uh, Frank, uh... generous, gregarious, um, impartial. Ooh, I like impartial. I kind of like generous. Okay. But I don't know how generous would apply to R and D or command, even though yeah, no, no generous. Okay. What do you think about impartial? No, nah, I don't think it works. No. No. Okay. Keep them coming, baby. Uh. And at least you're also thinking the the realm of like we have threatening, mystical, diplomatic, like in that realm too. How do how do we describe like an Bro, think of a Marvel movie. That is a, we got the mystical. Uh, intuitive, inventive, passionate, persistent, philosophical, which I think could oh. be kind of interesting. I was about to say divine. So like, I think Ooh. philosophical or divine, both, both are cool. Okay. Well, and we can probably cut it there for right now. Unless we I feel mean, like we're on a roll. We can keep going here. Yeah, um, let's, let's, let's keep it rolling then. Practical, rational, reliable, resourceful. Practical is a cool one. Practical R&D, practical command, practical support. I could see those roles coming up for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, so rational, uh, reliable, resourceful, sensible, sincere, sympathetic, unassuming is kind of interesting. Although I don't know how you oh. play it. Uh, yeah, then, it almost feels like I like witty. Witty, you think? Yeah, yeah. Let's try it. Yeah, why not? Yeah, that at least gives us a good, like, a good general box of yeah, yeah, stuff to pull from. And yeah, we right. can play test these and See figure what out what they. Doesn't. Yeah, figure out what works and what doesn't. <sighs> How many okay. we got there? Two. Uh, 11, 12. Oh, cool. Cool. All um, right. Now let's caravan creation. Let's just get this thing down. Okay, uh, caravan so creation. Uh, so number of XP we need to start. We're going to start with three jobs given right away. Yes. So what we're really doing is deciding how many, how many, and at what degree we want them to be able to have their dice evolved. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, continuing the trend that we have, we can have it cost, um, uh, may maybe it's, uh, we can just keep what we had for the character creation for skills, although it still doesn't give us a starting point. Um, Um, okay, let's just, Maybe. let's just, uh, do we know what stuff costs in terms of XP? Because that's, well, we that's the big thing. Yeah, so here's the thing. We know how much, like, I, I have a scale of, uh, let me look at my caravan sheet. Yep. Um, I have community goals 
being scored one through ten. So you can or you can get one through ten experience at a time completing community goals. So I think like it's scaled smaller, right? Okay. So um, we'd be looking we know at the very least we'd be looking at a number closer to like thirty rather than three hundred. Right. I, so, so maybe it's the cost of the die level that you're going to, and then two times for uh, 10 and 12. So it's 20 for a level 10, uh, 24 for a level 4, or for a level 12. And then maybe we start you with, let's see, if we have... We can start with just 20, right? I mean, that would be... Uh, 6 to bring to his uh, d4, and then if I wanted to bring it to an 8... Maybe we start with 30. Um, I, let's see. Let's both, let's both, you, do you have the Vault Peddler's Caravan creation sheet? Um, yeah, one sec. Right. Okay. So if I bring my R&D to a D6, that brings my 30 to a 24. And if I want to be really good at R&D, I'll bring that to a D8, which is an additional eight points. So that is uh, a 16. Now, yeah, I don't just want to be good at R&D. I'll bring my command up to a D6, brings me to a 10, and then... Um... Uh, I could bring... D6, uh, another D6. I could bring my command to. I think it's going to be more than 30. But by, not by much. Okay. Or maybe, I mean, like, maybe 30, 35 works. I I am not following how that math works out either way. So you tell me what you think you want to play test starting as, and we'll go from Let's... there. Yeah, let's both do one right now with thirty-five points. Hell yeah! With the, with the, and ju just yeah, without without um, additional quirks or anything like that. So, okay, uh, I'm gonna start with thirty-five. Cool. Uh, and are we actually making one right now? Yeah, let's just uh, ju just doing the uh, attributes. Cool. One sec. Let me pull this up real quick. So, so six points to bring it to. Oh wait, wait. Do you want to lock this as a template and then make like duplicate this on a new tab? Oh uh, yeah, let me do that. Okay. So I'll start clearing everything. Oh, so let's see. Clearing everything out. Duplicate. All right, I got you one on the bottom. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. Actually, let's start with 36 points because it's an even number, and I think all of these are makes more sense. Okay, so it's 36. Yep. And let's go. Okay, one sec. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Tent. I have two points left. You're doing this very quick. Yes. Well, you'll see why in a minute. <laughs> okay, one sec. I think like having experience points left over is fine in this system, right? Because you can sock them away. Yeah. Okay. Ugh. So what'd you do? Uh, I'm not even, I was organizing the word doc. Uh, oh, word. Yeah. Threatening. 
Okay. So, uh, they then buy the polyhedral die level of each attribute, these rays, and degrade through play. Um, how much does each die cost? It costs uh six to go to a d6 eight to go to a d8 oh, hang, on. To go hang, to, hang yeah. on hang on yeah it costs the die level of the of the next die except oh. for d10s and d12s cost double the die got so a d6 is six a d8 is eight and then 20 for 10 24 for uh, 12 yep cool sec to a chart later. Okay. So six. Is up to D8. Okay, cool. So that is done. Uh, only the roll performed. Okay, so I'm now picking a job. And I'm just picking the roll. Uh, yeah. Storyteller, herbalist, blacksmith, of course. At which point the GM will develop the stat block, pick a community goal, um, sustainable food, and what's the number next to uh, the community goal? Uh, that's how much XP you'll get for completing it. Gotcha. And that's just determined by the archivist? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Then by quirks, gaining XP to the level of detriment. Okay. So oh, quirks. I, I wasn't even doing that. I was just doing the attribute stuff real quick. Oh, that's okay, cool. I'm way ahead yeah. of you then. Uh, all right, cool. Yeah, I'm ready when you are. All right, so like just attributes, I took a D4 in my intel, a D4 in my support, a D4 in my command, and I got a D10 in my heart. <laughs> about to say, yeah, you pump that bad boy up. Okay, yeah, cool. I, I just wanted to see what it would look like uh, to try to stress one of them. And for myself, I pretty much kept everything uh, a lot more even across the board. I took a D6 in R&D command and intel and a D8 in support. And that's with 36? Uh, that is exactly 36, yes. Hmm, maybe we should keep it at 30? Because So here's my, here's my thing. I would like to have it enough where it's like, I want to take quirks at the beginning to, okay. like, pump something else up. So, so maybe it's 36 or 26 or something. Keep them low at first and encourage them to take quirks. Okay. Um, yeah, we can do that. So what are you thinking then? 28? 28? Yeah, let's try okay. 28. Sure. See how it plays. Are we doing that right now? Yeah, let's go ahead and yeah, let's yeah. just do that while we've got it. Yeah. So. And just doing the attributes. Yeah, just attributes. Okay. So if I have 28. That can't be right. I must have done my math wrong. What would you do? Because I have now, I have a better caravan now. Re Recount so it again. Two, two D6s is six points. That's 12. Mm -hmm. 
um, plus a D8 is eight. Oh no, I'm, I know what I did. It's because I didn't go up gradually. So I'd spend six for the, yeah, okay, that's what it is. So All this right. one left me with two. Same. Okay. Um, and I ended up with a D8 in R&D, a D4 in command, a D8 in support, and a D4 in intel. Okay, yeah. So I got a D4 intel, D6 support in R&D, and a D8 command. Right. I just want to see if I can pump up one to ten still, see if that works. Uh, so if I go to a 22 on... No, you can't bring one to ten at that point. Right? Because they bring, go to 26. It would cost to you 20. To, yeah. The thing is, you, you can't do it anyways, uh, Corey, because you would have to spend. You'd I have to do spend it at 36. All, yeah, all the levels. You'd have to spend all the levels before. Well, yeah, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Uh, so go to. Uh, I, I'm trying to see at, at what point, like, with. With a point cost, can we go up? Because I did it at 36. I want to see, is can you do it at a R&D at a D6 would be, uh, bring that to a 24. Sorry. I just want to make sure. No, couldn't do it. At, okay. So, I don't know, 30 or 28, I'm cool with. Um, I would. It's not probably... enough to bring anything statically, like at base, to a D10 or a D12, but it's enough where if I bought quirk, if we bought quirks, we could. Then I think that's what we should go with. Let's do twenty-eight. Okay, let's do twenty-eight. Uh, and we can reapproach that if we need to. So twenty-eight yeah. XP. All right. Um. So we've already done the buying. So now we're looking at jobs and NPCs. We pick three level one jobs. Select only the role performed, at which point the Archivist will develop an NPC stat block for these NPCs, including disposition and motivation. Yeah. Um, so I already did mine. Oh, yeah, I mean, this one, I didn't do anything. I, sure, yeah, I did it. Yeah. They're all named Murray. I'm surprised you didn't get uh, three blacksmiths. I have three Marys, though. That is pretty tight. <laughs> and they're all threatening. <laughs> um, okay. And then And then if I'm selecting the position, I'm also selecting the school, right? Like I can't no. have a I can't have a blacksmith that's in like no, that's that. Yeah, you, you select the job. Basically, the job comes predetermined with an attribute that it works towards. Some of the jobs that I wrote have the option for picking. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. So, so basically, you're picking a job at a rank level, and then like, so all you're doing on caravan creation really is applying the attributes that you want. Yeah. And uh, the die level that you want. So you're just kind of defining your caravan and picking the jobs that are in it. Yeah. And that's it. Okay, cool. Um, and then quirks. I'll make sure to put the, I'll put our word bank in. I'll put our quirks in that I have and our jobs in that I have. Yeah. Do we um, have, do we have descriptions for like tides of luck and all that stuff? Yeah, I wrote down uh, five quirks. Okay. Uh, if you go to the one e document. Yep. Um, I did quirks. Where uh, were those where at? did they go? Oh, I did them below jobs. Okay, I can move them up. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think we need five more. Um. <laughs> If we could get, what do we have? 10 jobs right now. So if we could get five more jobs, five more quirks, I'd be comfortable with the play test. Okay. Um, and between the two of us, if we could get that done, like by tomorrow, so I could plug them into the 
thing. Yeah, no, that's totally yeah. fine. Um, yeah. And then I'll drop a stat block too. Uh, on what do you call it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna copy this blank one here. This is our longest stream yet. Uh, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> um. Okay. So, you said we need five more uh, uh, quirks, right? Five more quirks, five more jobs. I think we'll be comfortable for playtesting. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, man. We did a lot today. We did. Do you want to cut the stream at this point, or? Yeah, let's cut it. Yeah. All Bye. Right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we will see you all uh, for ooh, next week's stream on Wednesday. Okay. Uh, we're going to have our good friend Nick with us, who's going to kind of play test uh, through all of this with us. And uh, uh, yeah, very excited to have him on. Very excited to see what you all think as we move into our season of extreme playtesting. Uh, thanks so much, y'all, and take care. Bye. Bye.